Hey, hey, what's up, guys? It's Jordan with the Laundromat Resource Podcast. This is show 96, and I am pumped that you're here today because today is a little bit different. Once again, I know I've been throwing a little bit of curveballs here and there, but uh, I'm excited about this one because I get asked about this so much. I thought, you know what? Let me just do a podcast episode about this and hopefully it'll help a lot of people. I can point some people to this um, and some other resources here in a second. So a little bit about today's podcast is this is taken from the first half of uh, a webinar that I give, a free live webinar that I give about once a month on how to analyze a laundromat deal. Okay, I get asked, how do I determine how much a laundromat is worth? What factors go into the valuation? Uh, what should I be looking for? And in this webinar, I break it down real simply, but real clearly. And uh, I thought it'd be cool as a standalone podcast episode, at least for the first half of this webinar, uh, because I know a lot of you guys are really just going to benefit from this uh, as you do your analysis, as you're looking for a laundromat uh, to, to buy. So uh, that's what today is all about. Uh, and I just want to say, again, I do this one, you know, once a month or every six weeks or so you can check out uh, all the all the uh, webinars that that we do over here at laundromatresource.com slash events. We do one about once a week. Uh, we do miss every now and then, but uh, you can check out laundromatresource.com slash events. And in fact, if you're listening to this right when this comes out, uh, I'll actually be doing this webinar on this Thursday, which is June uh, 7, 8, 9, June 9th of 2022. So uh, feel free to go sign up laundromatresource.com slash events to join that event uh, on how the webinar on how to uh, how to analyze a laundromat deal. You'll get uh, this first half of this will be uh, what you'll get basically here. Um, but the second half also will be on due diligence. And you'll hear a little bit about that uh, in this webinar, um, but we'll go into it a lot more detail in the webinar. And again, this is a free live webinar. It's interactive. You can ask questions throughout. So I encourage you you know, if that's, if you're in the acquisition phase or you're thinking about going into the acquisition phase, it's a webinar that is well worth its uh, price of admission, which is free. So uh, come join us over there at laundromatresource.com slash events. If you are dying and cannot wait until, you know, the next webinar, whenever it is uh, from when you're listening to this, you can get access to this full webinar and every other webinar replay of all the webinars we've done uh, since the existence of laundromat resource webinars uh, by joining the pro community. You get access to that, which is awesome. You also get access to the analysis calculator, which really simplifies this whole thing for you. You can plug in a few numbers numbers and it will spit out a value of the laundromat and offer range and a bunch of other details for you. Uh, it creates a really cool PDF uh, that you can uh, download for yourself, that you can share with a lender, that you can share with an investor partner. Uh, a lot of different things you can do with that analysis calculator. And again, you can try that for free at laundromatresource.com slash calculators and pro community gets unlimited access to that. And then one more thing that I just wanted to throw out there that I'm very excited with. Now this webinar on Amazon Analyzing a laundromat deal is awesome. Uh, a lot of really great details, but uh, there's just so much into going that goes into analyzing a laundromat. And there's a lot that you can do wrong. There's a lot that you can miss and end up overpaying. And so what I've been working on for a while now is a full course on how to analyze a laundromat deal. And that's coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, we're just putting the finishing uh, touches on it. And I keep thinking of new uh, modules to add to this thing, new lessons to add to this thing. It's a full and complete course. So if you really want to have a thorough understanding on how to analyze a laundromat deal. This course is going to be awesome. It's going to be uh, available to the pro community. Uh, it'll be included in the pro community. So, uh, you know, again, just throwing all the analysis stuff at you right now, the webinar replays are there, the analysis calculators there and that analysis course, very thorough, uh, very in-depth uh, course on how to analyze a laundromat deal to make sure you know what you're getting 
when you're buying your laundromat deal, it's coming in a couple of weeks. So get excited about that. If that is a phase in your journey that you are in. And of course, you know, also with the pro community, there's uh, we have partner discounts, another big announcement coming next week for another partnership that we've created. That's going to offer you some more uh, pro perks with the pro community and a whole lot of other stuff like the library of knowledge, uh, there's just a whole bunch of stuff. Go check it out. Lot of my resource.com slash pro. If you're interested. And again, we're always looking to make this thing even more valuable. My goal is for it to be like a no brainer uh, for you. So uh, working towards that every day. All right. That was, that felt like a big sales pitch. Sorry. I'm not trying to, you know, pitch uh, a sale to you here, but I'm just excited about everything that's going on and a huge welcome to all of you guys who have joined both the free community and the pro community uh, over there at laundromatresource.com slash pro. All right, uh, man, let's jump into it with this analysis webinar, uh, the first half of it and how to analyze a laundromat deal. Hopefully it's going to help a bunch of you guys out and uh, I'll see you on the backside to kind of close this thing out and pump you up to buy your first laundromat, your next laundromat to help you move towards financial freedom. That's what we're all about here. All right. First analysis. Now, when we, uh, when we analyze the deal, we're going to do uh, Mark, don't bait me, Mark. Uh, I'll, Ask me that question at the very end, and then I'll, I'll tell you what kind of discounts uh, are here, and there's some more coming too. So remind me. Uh, okay. So uh, when we analyze a deal, we're going to analyze a deal two times. Okay. Well, we're probably going to analyze it more than um, more than two times, uh, but two kind of categories of times. Okay. Now the first, there's, I'm just going to call it first analysis, second analysis. The first analysis is uh, your uh, but what it sounds like. It's the first time you're kind of analyzing a deal. Um, and here's, here's kind of the, the caveat to the first analysis. And if you're following along on the worksheet, um, you're going to use the numbers the seller gives you in this first analysis. Okay. You're going to use the numbers the seller gives you. Now, if you go on a site, like, uh, you know, if you type in laundromat for sale near me, some site's going to pop up some business listing site, probably you're going to click on it and it's going to give you some information. Right. And a lot of times it's like, Hey, I'm asking $500,000, you know, I'm making, you know, $20,000 a month of income and, you know, my expenses are $12,000, right? And you're like, well, okay, but like, are your, is your income really $20,000 exactly every month, right? Like, no, probably not. It's general, it's averages, right? But we're going to use these numbers, not always, but a lot of times it's how it is. We're going to use the numbers the seller gives us to do our first analysis. Now, here's what's a little bit uncomfortable for first timers uh, about this process is that these general unverified average numbers are actually the numbers that we're going to make our offer based off of. Okay. Now, most times you're not going to get access to, uh, to, you know, specific documents. You're not going to get access to, uh, you know, income and expense reports. You're not going to get access to tax returns or any of that. stuff. we'll talk more about that stuff in a little bit. Uh, but usually until a business is under contract, you're not going to get any of the detailed information. So you're going to be basing your offer based off of these average unverified, you know, round numbers. Um, okay. So what do we do about that? Um, we are going to make our offer with contingencies. Okay. Now some of the contingency I'll, I'll throw out a couple just, you know, so you, you get the idea. Um, but, you know, some of the contingencies you might want to include in an offer are going to be, you know, things like uh, contingent on verification of income and expenses. Super important to be able to verify that. Right. And if they're totally off, you want to be able to pull out of that deal. Right. Uh, contingent on inspections of equipment, of plumbing, of electrical, maybe of the building, uh, different inspections. Right. Ver uh, uh, contingent on um uh, loan qualification of a loan, right? Um, if you, if you go through the loan process and for whatever reason, the lender decides not to lend on it, you don't want to be stuck, uh, in that contract, right? So those kinds of contingencies you're going to include in your offer. And that, uh, is basically the only thing that's going to give you, uh, the confidence to be able to make that offer based on these unverified average numbers. Okay. So just know that that's the process almost all the time. And 
you know, just be okay with it. Be comfortable with it. Okay. So now we're going to get numbers such as, you know, income, we're going to get numbers such as the expenses. Uh, we're going to get, you know, uh, you know, some other numbers, maybe the lease amount or how much time's left on the lease, stuff like that. We're going to get these numbers. And the question becomes then what do we do? Right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to run the numbers. That's that second blank. I'm not going to do that for every blank, but second blank there's run the numbers. Okay. Now what numbers are we running and what are we doing with that? So let's talk about that for a second. We're talking about valuation right now. Okay. And you may have heard or you may not have heard um, that we value any kind of business or commercial real estate. We value it based on the performance, not on the potential of that business. Okay. The performance, not on the potential. Now, a lot of times sellers and brokers are going to try to sell you on uh, potential of the business saying, Hey, you know, you could add a wash and fold here and that'll add, you know, $15,000 of your income. Well, if it was just that easy, they would have done it right. You got to take on the responsibility and the risk and put in the work to do that. So you don't value the business based on that potential. You value it based on how it's performing now. Now, you may have heard that. You may not have heard that. What you don't hear, I've never heard anybody else saying this, is what exactly does that mean, performance? Now, performance, when we say that for a laundromat specifically, is a specific number, okay? And that number is called the net operating income number. Um, you may have seen it as EBITDA. Um, sometimes it's expressed as cash flow, which is actually a little bit different, but net operating income, EBITDA, uh, and you know, cash flow, a lot of times are used interchangeably. So that's the number that defines the performance of a business. Okay. And that's the cornerstone of the value of a laundromat. Okay. Are we all tracking? Are we good? Uh, let me know if I'm going too fast, going too slow, uh, talking nonsense, any of that stuff, let me know. Okay. All right. So we're going to calculate the net operating income. Okay. That's uh, our first step for in valuation. Now it's a pretty simple formula. It's just gross income, total gross income minus gross expenses before loan payments and taxes, stuff like that. Okay. So you don't include those in the expenses. So you're going to include your business expenses, like rent, like utilities, like, you know, labor insurance, like those kinds of things. Uh, but you're not going to include, uh, the seller's loan payments in their, in their taxes. Okay. Um, Cause those are treated very differently and it all depends on how you acquire the property. And there's a lot of things that go into that. Okay. So you don't include those. That's the net operating income. That's the cornerstone of the value of the laundromat. That's the performance of the, of the laundromat. Okay. Now, once we have that, so let's just take a fictitious example. We'll run it kind of through this whole webinar here. We'll make it super easy because my math is not that great. Okay. So let's just say, that, uh, you know, we have a laundromat that's for sale and the seller says, Hey, it makes $10,000 a month and the expenses are $7,000 a month. Okay. Now, obviously net operating income for this laundromat is right. $3,000. Okay. So that's the performance of the business, right. Or $36,000 for the year. Okay. So now the question becomes, once we have that number, what do we do with it? Right. Okay. So some of you guys probably know this already. We're going to apply a multiple to this, uh, to this net operating income. Okay. And that's going to help us determine the value. Now to put some framework around the multiple, the multiple genu uh, generally is somewhere between three and a half to five on average. Um, now I will say that right now is a very unique market. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't say it's unique, but it's unique as of lately where there's almost across the board. I do consulting all over the country and beyond, but all over the country here. And, uh, the it's, it's pretty much everywhere where there's a lot more demand than there is supply right now for laundromats, um, specifically. And so just like real estate actually. Um, and so, uh, that, that means that some places that multiple can actually creep up above that five times rate. And especially if you're like in LA, New York, New Jersey, Miami, Chicago, some of the Texas markets, you know, some of that stuff, some of the, the, the best laundromats, the biggest, best laundromats out there are trading or are selling for, you know, up above five, five and a half. I've even seen them up over six times multiple. Okay. But in general, the average is like three and a half to five. So that's what we're looking at. That's what we're kind of working with. Now, 
you know, for let's, let's throw out our, our example here for a second, because again, my math's not that good, but let's say we have this other one that we're looking at and the net income is hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Now that means the value of this laundromat can be anywhere between $350,000 and $500,000, right? Three and a half times that hundred thousand or five times that hundred thousand. Well, that's $150,000 spread for the value of this laundromat. So how do we know where on the spectrum this laundromat is, should be valued, right? So that's the question. How do we determine what the multiplier is? Okay. So we're going to determine the multiplier. Now there's three main, uh, three main categories or three main kind of, uh, metrics that we need to look at in order to determine the multiplier. Now on the worksheet, you'll see there's only two blanks, but two of them are semi-related. So I probably should just add another blank, but, um, you, you'll see two blanks there. Okay. So the first thing that we need to look at now, there, Real quick, there's there's more than these three things that can go into the multiplier, but these three main ones will get you very, very close uh, to what um, the valuation should be, okay? Uh, three years of gross income, more or less the value. Uh, three to five years of gross. It really depends on how you run that business. Uh, you will see it across the board. So I would not even, the only factor that gross income has is in determining the net income. I would not base value off of gross income because uh, you know laundromats are managed very differently. Some owners are very good at running their expenses very lean and keeping high margins and high income, and some are not as good. And you don't want to pay based on that gross if you're getting a laundromat that's been poorly managed and the net income is low. Um, so I would base the value off the net income and. Don't even worry about the gross income except for to determine the net income. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, and I've been looking into random business brokers online to see if, yeah, laundromats for sale. Good. Yeah. So be connecting with those guys. What if the laundry, is it KK this week or KJ or what? Last week, it kind of switched midway. So you got to keep me posted. Uh, what's the, what if the laundromat is making nothing and they want 80? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk about that in a second because there is a, uh, KK this week. Okay, good. Uh, there is a, oh, net income. Yeah, 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 exactly. Three to five years of net income. Right, Mark. Um, so there is a caveat to this valuation. So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, okay. So good questions. Uh, okay. So how do we determine this multiplier? Now there's three main factors. The first one is age and condition of the machines. Okay. In fact, I'm going to do this. I'm going to share my screen with you for a second. Um, you know, we have a, uh, an, a, an analysis calculator here that, um, on the website, and I just want to share this with you because it'll be easier to kind of visualize this. So you can check it out. Um, you can, you can try it out for free at laundromatresource.com slash calculators or slash analysis calculator. Um, just a quick kind of tour of this thing. Uh, you know, what it's going to allow you to do is input details of the laundromat and it's going to spit out a valuation and a valuation suggested offer range down here too. And so we'll go through this as, uh, you know, by way of explaining the valuation. So real quick, unrelated to the valuation, you can do some cool things like you can add a photo. Um, Oh man. Well, I don't have a photo on me right now, but you can add a photo and business details like the address, Google maps link, uh, any more kind of information, equipment mix, all this stuff. You can have it all in one place. Why this is really cool is number one, it helps you kind of keep track. If you're looking at a bunch of laundromats. Number two, when, if you're working with a lender, this is really good to give them all the information they're going to need, um, on a laundromat here, all in one place. And you'll see at the very end, you can actually, um, download a report here and it'll spit out a, a nice clean, um, report that you can give to the lender. Number three, if you're working with a partner um, or you're trying to raise money, uh, this is an awesome tool for that too. Okay. So we're going to skip all of this because you know we don't care that much. Um, now performance, remember net operating income, that's what we're looking for. So let's put in our, uh, what do we say? 10,000 and 7,000 over here, not 70. Uh, seven. Okay. So that gives us our net income and our yearly net income. Now you can get way more granular, especially in the second analysis, which we'll talk about um, with this, where you can actually break it down here and it's going to give you the total washer income for the year, the average per month and the percentage of the total income for all of these categories. And same with the expenses. 
Um, and then you can add in loan. It'll give you the net operating income. Then you can add in your loans um, and stuff here and, and give you the cash flow. Uh, we're going to skip all that. That'll auto populate all this stuff up here, but we're going to skip all that today. Just a cool little feature. Um, okay. So the first uh, thing that we need to look at for the multiplier is age and condition of the machines of the equipment. Okay. Age and condition of the machines. Now, obviously newer equipment is going to be worth more money than older equipment. Right. And uh, so, you know, obviously that's going to command a higher multiple. So just to kind of put some constraints around it, um, now this can vary a little bit, but this is, these are pretty good. Um, I've just found after looking at, you know, hundreds, probably thousands of laundromat deals, these are pretty good little uh, ranges here um, that you can see uh, zero to five years. You can see that that is going to give you the highest multiple here. Um, and then it kind of goes down from there, you know, six to nine, 10 to 14. So let's just say our, uh, should we name our laundromat? Let's name it. Let's name it. Uh, know, my favorite laundromat name ever is the soapy senorita. So we will call it the soapy senorita, right? It's got equipment that's six to nine years old. Um, so that gives us about a four and a half, uh, times multiplier here. And uh, so that's the first kind of condition to help us determine the multiplier. The second and third are both related to the lease. Okay. The first one we're going to talk about is the amount of rent, the rent amount. Okay. Now uh, the, the rent amount, it's hard to figure out multiple based on a number. And so the best way that I found to figure out how the rent amount relates to the multiplier is to look at it as a percentage of the gross income. Okay. So let's say our lease is $2,000 a month and uh, our gross income is, you know, 10,000. So that gives us a 20% uh, uh, rent to income uh, ratio here. Okay. And that's pretty good. So 25 is really the number that we're looking for, but let's say that uh, 25% is that's our kind of, and less that's our target um, and then as we go up from there, the multiple is going to go down. Okay. So let's say that's our lease amount, but there's also a common area maintenance or a triple net. Let's say it's a triple net expense. And just so we're all on the same page, triple net is like the greatest invention of landlords ever, commercial landlords ever. Uh, basically what that means is the landlord pays zero expenses for the property and all the tenants split up the expenses for property taxes, that's one net, uh, insurance for the property, not for the business, but for the property, that's two nets. And uh, what did I say? Property taxes, insurance, and the maintenance costs. Okay. Those are the three nets of the triple net, right? So the, the tenants all pay that and the landlord pays nothing. All right. So let's say there's a triple net expense and let's call it, uh, I don't know, 800 bucks, not 8,000. I keep doing that. Um, so now you can see that we're at 28% of our gross income of that $10,000 and our multiple dropped here. Okay. To, to four and a half. Right. And if we, you know, if, if things go up, either the rent or the triple net costs or whatever, go up, see we're at 30%, it dropped a little bit more. Okay. So let's say this is our, this is our lease amount three grand here. Okay. So that gives us a multiple that puts us around four. So now we got a four and a half for the equipment age. We got a four, you know, for the lease information, the, the last kind of main factor for the, uh, for the multiple is the length of the lease. Okay. So just to kind of set the stage for the length of the lease, let's say that, uh, you know, who wants to own a shoe store here? Uh, Sam, you were helping me out earlier. So Sam owns a shoe store. Uh, you know, you can tell he's a baller and he's got, you know, he's got the shoe store on lock. He's selling the Nikes and everything. Right. Well, let's say his lease comes up and his landlord says, you know what? Your shoes like literally smell, you need spray or something. I don't want you in this, you know, in this commercial facility anymore. I'm not going to renew your lease. Right. Sam is super bummed out but he goes and rents a U-Haul. He packs up all his shoe boxes and all the shelves and everything. And he moves down the road to a new space and reopens a week later, right? Laundromats, however, uh, you can't really do that, right? So if a landlord says, you know what? I don't want a laundromat here anymore when that lease is up. You got to do something else. Well, it's very expensive and very difficult to the point of being almost impractical uh, to move a laundromat, 
And so you're kind of out of luck and all you have now is a bunch of equipment that you're going to have to haul into your garage or a storage unit or something until you can figure out a way to sell it and recoup some of your money. Right. It's not a good situation. Uh, Equally bad, if not even worse of a situation, if the landlord says, we love having you here as a laundromat, but your rent's going to double or triple uh, going forward, right? Now you're in a really tough spot because not only uh, is your rent going up, so your expenses are going up, which means you're putting less money in your pocket every month, but also remember uh, that net income number determines the value of our laundromat. So not only are we making less every month, we're also... uh, uh, we're also losing a bunch of equity in our business. Um, our net worth is going down, right? Bad situation. So because of that, laundromats want long leases. Long leases are good. Okay. So you can see here where if we're at a 15 plus years, um, you know, we're at a high multiple over here, but if we have like 10 or 11 years, that multiple is dropping, you know, pretty significantly. So, uh, the amount of the lease as a percentage of the income and the length of the lease are the the last two kind of main factors uh, to determine that multiple. Okay. And now what you can do is, you know, average these numbers, or um, sometimes you need to weight one a little more than the others. So let's say, you know, the, let's say the lease is really good actually, but the equipment's a little older. Well, having a good lease that's long and low it's actually really, really valuable. You might want to give that a little more weight than having to replace equipment in a few years. Uh, okay. So that's kind of how you would use these three main factors, aging condition of the machines, the length of the lease and the amount of the lease to determine the multiple. Okay. So for our soapy senior Rita laundromat, we've got $36,000 of net income for the year. And you can see that our multiple comes out to be around 4.17. Okay. So one other factor we added in here in the calculator, uh, because I started seeing this trend, you know, kind of throughout is where you're actually located. So if you're in a larger Metro area, a lot of times there's more demand, there's more buyer potential, um, for the laundromat, which drives up the multiple. So you can see if we're in a large, uh, Metro area, you know, that multiple might be adjusted up to almost a four and a half here. Whereas if we're in rural, a rural, rural, rural that's a hard word to say. If you're out in the boondocks, right. And you got a laundromat out there. Uh, you can see it actually decreases, uh, could potentially decrease the, um, the multiple here. And the reason for that is because there's just generally speaking, less interested buyers, uh, for a laundromat that's kind of out in the boonies a little bit. Um, so that you can, you can factor that in or not suburban, you know, just kind of makes it, uh, you know, here. Um, okay. So you can see now we've got our net operating income. We've got our multiple and it spits out a value for us for our laundromat, right? So our our laundromat's worth about $150,000 according to the numbers the seller gives us. Right now, remember, these are unverified. These are averages, they're round numbers. So you need to, you need to know kind of going in that your initial offer is just that it's an initial offer. You should be prepared probably to uh, renegotiate after we do our second analysis, which we'll talk about in a second. Okay. So it spits out a value for us. And then it gives us kind of a minimum maximum here. And this is not, these are not hard numbers. You can definitely offer less or more depending on, you know, the circumstances. Uh, But this kind of gives you a suggested range here. And then real quick, the last thing you can kind of do is download uh, a report, which will spit out a PDF for you that you can see here. It'll have a picture if you uploaded a picture and all your information here, Um, everything you kind of input here. And then if you used the the table here. Um, it has all that information here. You probably won't use this in the first analysis, but you may want to use it in the second analysis when you get this kind of detailed information. Okay. Uh, cool. So that's what I wanted to show you in terms of valuation that hopefully was helpful. Let me unshare, stop sharing. Okay. Are we all good? Uh, I see nothing came in during that whole time for the chat. So are we all good? Everybody good? Put your questions in there. Okay. I see a thumbs up. Thank you, Harris. I appreciate that. Uh, good. 
Mint. Okay. I'm assuming that means good. I don't know. Or fresh and clean. I like that. Uh, okay. So that's valuation. Um, so that's what we're going to do for that's, that's what I mean by we're going to run our numbers. Okay. And that's going to give us a value. Now, let me, uh, let me just tell you before we talk a little bit more, um, about, uh, making our offer and then going into the second analysis, I need to tell you the dirty little secret about a laundromat's price. Okay. The asking price. This is the dirty little secret about a laundromat's asking price. It's irrelevant. You can ignore it completely. It literally does not matter. Uh, all that asking price is, is what the seller wants for that laundromat, but it does not matter. And it does not factor in whatsoever uh, for the valuation of a laundromat. Now, let me tell you a story. This is a true story about a, a consulting client of mine uh, looking for a laundromat in the New Jersey area and went around asking laundromat owners they're interested in selling, found one who said they're interested in selling. Uh, he said, okay, cool. How much do you want for it? They said that we want $850,000 for it. We said, all right, cool. So we gathered information about this laundromat. We ran all the valuation numbers and went through, um, you know, everything we could did an analysis on the area and all that stuff and spit out a value of uh, $425,000. Okay. So they're at 850 and we're at $425,000 and said, Hey, look, you know, to my client, Hey, look, this is the, um, you know, this is, this is what it's worth. So I think we need to make our offer at 425. And he was very hesitant to do that. You can, you can, you know, you can kind of imagine how uncomfortable that might feel to come to a seller and say, actually, what you thought was worth $850,000, I think is worth $425,000. It's kind of an uncomfortable thing to do. But I said, hey, look, this is, we're, we're not, the, the asking price is irrelevant. We're basing it on the performance of this laundromat. This is what the performance says it's worth, right? So finally, mustered up the courage, submitted that, you know, that counter proposal there and heard crickets, crickets for like a few days, but you know how, like when you're waiting on something, a few days feels like an eternity and he's sweating bullets. And he's like, I guess they're not going to, you know, come back, you know, with a counter offer. Uh, after a few days, they came back with a counter offer and their counter offer was $475,000. Now, just like that, their price dropped what? $375,000. Um, and the reason for that is because Number one, that asking price usually is one of a few different things can either be uh, just a number they plucked out of the air and threw out there. It's like, Hey, be nice to get this amount of money. I've seen that plenty of times. Um, or it can be a negotiation technique called anchoring. You probably heard of it, or if not, here's what anchoring is, is like when you're negotiating with somebody, you want to start with the high number and then even if so, like, for example, if we had said, man, it feels too uncomfortable to offer 425, let's offer 600, which still feels uncomfortable. It feels a little better. Well, all of a sudden we just lost $125,000 just like that because we were anchored by that higher price. Right. And so we felt obligated to offer more than what we really thought we should. Right. So that's why I say, just ignore it. It's irrelevant base your offer off the numbers, the performance of the business. Um, and then you can negotiate from there. That wasn't the end of that negotiation. We kind of still went back and forth a little bit and, and ended up finding a deal there. But, um, but, and that's an, obviously an extreme example, but it illustrates the point that the asking price is just that it's asking price and it doesn't matter what the valuation. Okay. So you can ignore the seller's asking price and we calculate the value based on performance. Okay. So let's say we did all that. And, you know, our, our soapy senorita laundromat there, what did we say? It was worth 150. So we offer, let's just say we offered 150 for it. Maybe there was some back and forth. Maybe there wasn't, but we agreed on a deal. Okay. Now remember, this is all based off of whatever the seller has told us. And we have no idea, you know, how accurate these numbers are. So when we do our second analysis, we're going to use, so remember first analysis, we use the numbers the seller gives us. Second analysis, we use the numbers that you discover. Okay. Use the numbers that you discover. All right. Now, this whole process after you get an offer accepted is called due diligence. Right. And what that means is we're going to discover our own numbers to use and verify uh, what the sellers had to say and, and 
be more precise about it. All right. I hope you found that uh, valuable. I know you're probably itching and dying to find out about how you uh, use the numbers that you discover to analyze the deal and how you actually discover those numbers so that you can get a good analysis. And again, go to a lot of my resource.com slash events and uh, sign up for the next available analysis webinar uh, that that'll be on there. Hopefully if there's one coming up, there usually is about every four to six weeks or so another one coming on. And if you're dying again, to get into that webinar, dig into that along with all the other stuff we got going on, go join the pro community, get access to uh, that webinar replay and every other webinar we've ever done. Uh at resource.com slash pro come join us. A lot of awesome stuff happening over there and more to come all the time. All right. Hopefully you found that uh, enjoyable and valuable, and we'll see you next week with another big announcement uh, for the pro community over there next week. All right. We'll see you then. Peace.